Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year is in Tadah number 114, challenging the Sanhedrin. Because when we be more makel, we're more lenient than the Sanhedrin. Because when we be more mach, we're more stringent than the Sanhedrin. So in the previous year, we actually quoted the Ramban, and his commentary to Rambam, Sheif Sefer Mitzvah, number uh, Shoresh 1, page 14, where the Ramban says it works in a simple way. Basing goes ahead, and basing goes ahead lenient. So let's say, for example, years ago, 10, about a decade ago, there's a whole question of shaitals with hair from India, is idolatrous or not. Let's say, this didn't happen, but let's say there's a Sanhedrin, and they pask in the hair from India is not idolatrous, and therefore the shaitals are fine. And you have a hush of Rabbi in Beit Shemesh. He was in India. He did his research, and he knows that it was used for idolatrous purposes, and he studied the practices. He's convinced. So, Sanhedrin, Paskin, said, hey, it's not idolatrous. He's in Beit Shemesh. He says, what are you talking about? It is. Can't use the shaitl. What happens then? So Ramban says, till he goes up to the Harabite and argues with them, and the and Zanachem Gobek said he must go up and argue, but till that happens, he keeps his psak. No, but over here, his psak is simply to be stringent. So it means he will not have his wife wear such a shaito. What about the other way around? They paskin that this hair is idolatrous. And he says, no, I was an Indian. I checked all their practices. It's not idolatrous. And his mutter, can he be lenient against the Sanhedrin? Of course, he has to go up and eventually clarify with them. But till that happens, it could be day, two days a week, two weeks, he gets there. In the old times especially. So what's Allah in such a case? So the Ramban only gave an example where the Sanhedrin is lenient and you, the Tamil Chacham, are Mahmir. And he says, you keep that chumrah until you work it out with them and have the back and forth masa matan. He doesn't give the other case, where you're lenient. Razan Yechem Migorbuk says, not sure about such a case, not clear. And it could be the far is, do you say, listen, until you go there, you have a right to paskin. Once you have a right to paskin, then your psak is your psak. You're not bound by them. Once you're not bound by them, you're an independent posek who didn't go to meet with them, you're going to do that. Until that happens, you paskin. And if you paskin that it's the halachas lenient, you could do it and follow it. Or do you say that, no, maybe theoretically you could paskin, but you cannot go ahead and someone uh, 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 with an act, positive act, going against the Beit HaNagalos. So very nice, in theory, you could paskin, but you cannot have a maaseh, where you're going against the, the, the Sanhedrin publicly even though you are not technically bound by them yet because you didn't meet with them. So it's one thing, Shev al you're just not doing anything. But to actively go against them, you cannot have such an act go on in Klai Yisrael, even though you have the depend- independence and the courage to do that. And Allah recognizes that and recognizes that you shouldn't follow the Sanhedrin yet. That's the mission of Still, it's one thing to not follow them and be cautious and be stringent, but not to go and initiate a positive act where you do something blatantly different, where you are lenient against the Beitin, it's a Tzarech Iyin, as Abraham Goldberg says, Mitzvah Shem will have the center back and will have such problems. Shalom.